What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Rad Chad Show. Today we have got two reviews in one video and that is of Deckscape Test Time as well as Deckscape The Fate of London. Uh, we were previously doing these escape room games uh, as just individual reviews and then I realized, you know what, there's just a lot, there's too much commonality within these series uh, to justify a review for each individual game. But we're gonna talk about both of these. It is literally the best and the worst of what escape room games have to offer, but why and which game is the best and which game is the worst? Let's find out right now in this review of Deckscape. Okay, so basically what we want to accomplish in this review is four things. The first of which is I'll give you guys a quick summary of sort of how this game feels to play. Then we'll dive into the pros, the cons, and the things that I find just okay about uh, Test Time and the Fate of London. But without further ado, let's talk about uh, Deckscape and how it plays. If you're not familiar with escape room board and card games, basically you are locked in some sort of environment for whatever reason and you have to find your way out in a certain amount of time. That's the general premise and this series in specific tries to build in a sort of story. Uh, one has got uh, more or less a time travel story to it that's test time and then in the fate of London there's like this bomb diffusing uh, sort of story. Uh, they're a little bit wacky but we'll talk about that a bit later. Now when you actually start getting into the game it's fully cooperative. Uh, the thing that makes this game unique is that it's just one big old thick chunky deck of cards. Uh, and when you first start playing the game, you're going to uh, divide that deck of cards into four separate color coded decks. So you have like a yellow deck, a red deck, a blue deck, and I don't know, maybe a green deck, something to that effect. And, uh, and basically you're just going to go through and solve the puzzles. You may solve the puzzles for yellow first and then move into red, or maybe you do green simultaneously. You're going to be kind of like mixing and matching and moving across different locations, I guess you could uh, sort of see it as. And there's really only like two different types of cards. So you've got like uh, more or less item or clue cards. Uh, these can be manipulated and used in order to help you solve other cards, which would be your puzzle cards. And a puzzle card could be something as simple as, hey, there's a brick wall with 100 different bricks on it, and if you push one of those bricks inward, you open up a secret door, and I'm just making this up off the top of my head. And what makes this game uh, kind of unique and interesting is that once you have figured out, okay, I think it's this brick over here, um, you just have everybody at the table agree, yep, I think you're right, you flip over the card, and it immediately tells you, uh, yes, your answer is correct, or no, your answer is incorrect, and then it gives you uh, the solution. Um, and so really, you just keep solving puzzles until you get to the grand finale. You see how much time it took you, how many things you got wrong, and you get a final score. And that's basically how you play these games. There's almost nothing else to it. Uh, the instructions within the game are told on the first, I don't know, three, four, maybe five cards. So it's really quick and easy to get into and a great starting point for people who are looking at escape room games. So that's the summary. But let's talk about some of the pros cons and the things I find just okay about the game. Now the pros, there are a few that are pretty easy and universal between the two games. The first of which is that I think they've got pretty good components. Uh, the artwork's not half bad, but the thing that I like the absolute most and the reason why I put it in the good category is they have got these really thick, chunky cards. So even though this box uh, doesn't look that big, the cards are literally the exact same size basically as this box. And a standard deck of poker cards would, I don't know, maybe be yay tall and only come over to here. So they are substantially bigger than a standard deck of poker cards. Uh, it allows people when you're sitting around a table to easily be able to, to see things. Um, and I, I just find it allows some of the artwork to shine a little bit more when you've got some more real estate to actually show it off in. The other thing that's great is it's a really low price point to play through these games. I think you can buy these for 10 bucks, maybe even a little bit less online. Uh, and I think for the one hour you're gonna play this game, if you play it with two, three, or four people, is going to be uh, well worth the money. Uh, well, at least for one of these two, because it's the best and the worst. Um, they can also be replayed. So after you are done uh, playing this, you can simply, I mean, the deck is just numbered one through 60, I believe. You just put the numbers all back in order. You don't have to destruct anything. Uh, in fact, the only thing that you would even write on is it does come with a score sheet, which tells you to write down your time. So let's say you start at seven o'clock and it tells you to, to timestamp afterwards. So you finish at eight o'clock and then you write down an X for each one of the uh, answers that you got wrong. 
You could very easily do that on a separate piece of paper, and I find absolutely no reason why you would use a score sheet in this game. So it is fully replayable, and if you want to sell it, trade it, give it off to a friend, you can definitely do that. I love that about uh, these games and any other games in the Escape Room series that does that, uh, because the one thing that I hated about Exit uh, pretty pretty significantly was the fact that when you're done, you just chunked in the trash and it's gone forever. So I love that it is replayable. Uh, now, test time. This is one of the best escape room games that we have played so far. And the number one reason for that is the pacing is fast and furious. Uh, it is, you are just moving from one puzzle into the next puzzle. There's always something for somebody to, since it splits up into four decks, there's always something for somebody to pick up, to look at, to manipulate, to try to solve. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration between everybody. Okay, hey, there's this uh, clue card over here. Why don't I mix it with your puzzle card? I really, really like the setup of the game, the amount of puzzles. There's probably 30, 40, maybe 50 puzzles in the game. There is a lot. Uh, the variety of the puzzles puzzles in test time is phenomenal, not just in the way that you have to solve the puzzles, but also in the difficulty of the puzzles. It's got everything from easy, medium to hard puzzles. It's all smushed in there. Um, and boy, I'll tell you what, the, the pacing of this game is exceptional. Really, really loved Deckscape test time. The other thing, other than the fast and, and frantic pacing that I, that I absolutely loved, is the fact that there is no pressure whatsoever when playing this game. When you get into some of these other escape room games, there's a timer ticking down. Every time you get an answer wrong, it beeps at you in this loud screeching noise and you're like, ah, right? And so it can be kind of frustrating. Um, there can also be puzzles where you just hit a brick wall, you can't figure it out and it becomes demoralizing. And those two things really just put um, us and the group on edge sometimes. In this game, two things. Number one is, sure, there's a scoring system at the very end, but really who cares, right? Like who are you competing with? So if you got the A plus rating, great. You know, hand clap, high five, knuckle bump each other, awesome. If you got the F rating, whatever, right? Like it doesn't matter. There is no sense of failure. Even if you don't uh, successfully uh, complete out a specific, uh, so I got distracted there for a second, a specific puzzle, all you do is flip over the puzzle and it says, yep, you were either right or no, you were wrong. And you just mark an X, you move on with your day. I love that about this game. So I love that there's no true time pressure and there's no severe penalty for incorrect answers. So those are the main pros. And those are why I give Deckscape test time easily like a good seven and a half, maybe an eight out of 10, which at least in my way of looking at it, and I, I sort of parallel the way that Board Game Geek uh, does their rating system, that would be very good. Uh, a game that I would strongly recommend to somebody else. It's not the best game I've ever played, um, but in terms of escape room games, it's certainly up there as one of the best I've played so far. Let's talk about some things that I found just okay, all right? So both games try to involve some sort of theme or story, uh, and the contextual reason for why you're traveling through time or why you're diffusing these bombs doesn't necessarily correlate perfectly with the puzzles that you're actually solving. I applaud them for their effort, but it's not perfectly uh, well implemented. Uh, but I think all escape room games are really gonna struggle with this until, I don't know, some sort of writer maybe. Uh, you're gonna have to put a lot of effort in order to make the puzzles and the story uh, code inside with one another in a way that is realistic and good. The games also try to fit in this like grand finale or twist. So when you're done with all four of these decks, uh, you go on to like one master puzzle. There may even be a, uh, a question that you have to solve at the very end, uh, which uh, sort of wraps everything together. I can't dive any deeper without going into spoilers. It's a unique concept. It makes these games uh, stand out a little bit uh, differently than all of the other escape room games that I've played so far. But especially in test time, uh, the final sol solution, the answer uh, to the question that it proposes. I just wish there was more rationale, more explanation for why if I chose this, I got this repercussion or why I chose this, I got that. It just didn't make much sense. I can't go into any more than that. You're gonna have to take me for this. Again, it's one of these things where I applaud them for your effort. It just wasn't that well implemented. But you know what? It doesn't really detract from the overall experience. It was just something worth noting. And then the final thing is just that scoring system. This could be a pro, could be a con, it could be an okay for anybody. Just for me, the scoring system, I, I almost, for me, I just leave it out. I, I really don't care. But let's talk about some of the cons. And really almost all of this relates to just the fate of London. This is easily the worst escape room game I've played so far. I hate to be that brutally honest about this game. 
my wife gave it a one out of 10. I mean, she finished it and she was like, hated it. Absolutely hated every last bit of it. And I'm not that polarized on it per se. Um, but I will tell you that we played test time first. We came off on a huge high of that game. We absolutely loved it. We were thrilled to jump into the fate of London. I think we've played it maybe just two days later. And, um, the puzzles are just extraordinarily difficult. Uh, and it's further exasperated by the fact that the clue system is not very good. So it gives you uh, a couple clue cards at the beginning. You flip over these clue cards and it's got numbers along the side. So there is, I don't know, maybe a, a sentence, four or five words, something like that, that will help uh, you get a nudge in the right direction for any one specific puzzle. And it just doesn't encourage you to use those clues enough. And some of these clues just don't give you enough of a nudge. Like in exit the game, there was like clue number one, clue number two, and clue number three. And it gave you a sense of progression. Okay, maybe I only need a little help. Maybe I need a lot of help, right? This doesn't give you that. Uh, so really, I felt like the help was almost non-existent and almost an afterthought. Like they expected you to almost not even use the clues. Um, but... That's not the main problem. The main problem is that the puzzles just suck, period. Um, so like I said, there's maybe 30 puzzles or so, and I think we probably got not one, not five, not 10, maybe 15 of them wrong in The Fate of London. And uh, my wife, especially more than me, she is exceptional at, uh, at puzzles. Uh, so for her to be stumped, you know, for me to be stumped, that would be one thing. I'm, I'm a knucklehead, right? But for her to be stumped, uh, it, it really soured our, our, our taste when it came to this game. And the biggest reason is we would answer the question, we'd flip it over and we'd be like, oh, that's the solution. Hmm. Literally could have sat here for the rest of my life and I would have never figured that out. I don't even know how you could assume that anybody would even come to that conclusion. And we felt that way about just a ton of the puzzles. And that's really unfortunate. It was so bad that towards the end of the game, let's say there was a four options for us to choose uh, to solve the puzzle. We basically just look at the puzzle and be like, eh, this one, let's just choose this. Sure. Yep. That one looks good. Let's choose that. There's a one in four chance. Don't even care anymore. And when you have somebody that is that fed up with a game and it didn't even last a full 60 minutes, I think you've got a fundamental problem uh, with the game and it's really unfortunate. And that's why the fate of London, I think is the worst escape room game I've played so far. Whereas Deckscape test time is one of the best. Um, so Deckscape has been so far the best and the worst of what escape room games have to offer. Uh, I would give, again, test time, seven and a half, eight out of 10. The Fate of London for me personally, two, two and a half, three maybe. Uh, I just would not recommend it. Um, but that's it for Deckscape. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the review. And if you want to check out any of the reviews for other escape room games, we've got basically all of them from Unlock to Exit. Uh, soon we'll have Escape The Room. We've also got Escape Room The Board Game. And then uh, we'll also be doing a grand comparison of all these games, which you guys can certainly check out. Uh, swing on over to the YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button, and that way you will be notified as soon as that uh, pops up. And who knows? We've got some time here. Uh, the holiday season's coming around, uh, so we will definitely be playing a lot of board games, and that means more content for you guys. Anyways, thanks for watching The Rad Chat Show. Thank you for watching The Rad Chat Show. Until next time.